existed as God the Son eternally. But when he's being born, uh, the Bible says that here's Jesus' perspective on, on, the, on Christmas. When he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Now, so the first statement is a body you have prepared. The second statement is in Hebrews 10, 7. And the word of God that says, Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will. So the first statement is, A body you have prepared for me. You prepared me. Second, Jesus says, I come to do your will, O God. Okay? And then there is the third statement that is made, Hebrews 10.15. And Hebrews uh, 10.15 and 16 uh, says this, Hebrews 10.15, but the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, verse 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, notice he says, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Okay? So there's three statements. Number one, a body you've prepared. Number two, I come to do your will. Number three, I'm going to establish a new covenant. The first covenant is going to be done away with, and the, and the new covenant, and the... Uh, the uh, important things of the core of the new covenant is this. Jesus says, I will write my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Okay? So the Lord looked at, at, um, at Christmas coming into the world. He looked at it as a mission that he came because when he says, therefore, I'm back to Hebrews 10 and 5. Hebrews 10 and 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire. Now, let me go back to Hebrews 10.4 and uh, give us an example, give us an understanding of what Hebrews 10.5 is saying. I haven't lost anybody. Everybody with me? So Jesus' perspective on Christmas was he came in the world to die. That's why he was coming. He was coming to be a sacrifice for us. So Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 4 says, before it is impossible, let me use the, uh, use the word for as because. Because it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats can take away sin. Therefore, Jesus says, first statement, therefore, when he came into the world, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me. Everybody with me? So, Jesus, so Christmas is all about Jesus coming to die. Jesus coming to die. Amen. Of all the songs that we sing at Christmas, you know, they, they, don't, say, they don't sing this one. You don't hear this too often. But uh, it's called uh, I, I Wonder. It says, I wonder as I wander. See, I wander as I wander out under the sky. How Jesus the Savior did come for to die. For poor, ornery people like you and like I, I wonder as I wander out under the sky. You don't hear that too often. That's a, that's a beautiful song. Beautiful Christian. So, and, and it's saying that that uh, Jesus knew he was coming to do the, he, he was coming to, uh, to live a holy and perfect life. A body was prepared him. Number two, he was going to do the Father's will. And number three, he was going to establish an, a new covenant where we would love him and follow him and the laws would be written in our hearts and on our minds. Praise the Lord. That's what Christmas is all about. Now, I ask you, have you heard that perspective? much <laughs> no i mean it might be christmas gifts 
It might be all kinds of things that we sing. Santa Claus coming to town, different things like, like that. And I'm not knocking any of that, but I'm saying, but Christmas, uh, Jesus came, and uh, he came because he understood that when he came into the world, he says, sacrifice and offerings, Hebrews 10, 5, you, Father, he's talking to his Father. He says, you, Father, you did not desire. And so you mean, so why didn't, why didn't the Father desire sacrifices and offerings? Our, our Heavenly Father is the one who ordained them, right? The Levitical system where um, he, he starts it off in, in Exodus, and then it's, it has given us more understanding in Leviticus. So what's it all about? God cannot be approached. He's holy. An innocent victim has to die. And so this sacrificial system given to the priest, and uh, the priest had to perform this exactly. Are you with me? No, they couldn't come to God in any, any, all, any kind of way. They had to come to God's ordained, prescribed way. Okay? So why does Jesus say in, in 10.5, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering, you did not desire. What does what that mean? You did not desire that. Didn't God set it up? Didn't he ordain it? I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So the sacrificial system... Uh, was never ordained to take away sin. Okay? And uh, so, and, and you see the same thing in, in religion, because this is God-ordained religion. This is what you have to do. And uh, what we, but, but what Jesus was saying, that was not what the Father desired for us to have relationship with him. Because the, the sacrificial system, all it showed is that we were sinners. And as you said, Sister, uh, 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 Sister uh, uh, my, uh, uh, Simmons, <laughs> uh, uh, as you said, somebody had to die. And so verse 4, as you, uh, it is not possible that the blood of sins, that the, excuse me, that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins, Hebrews 10.4. Everybody with me? Any comments so far? Animal sacrifices couldn't take away sins. Somebody had to die. Someone had to take away sins. So Jesus understood. He says, so coming into the world, a body you have prepared for me. So that's his perspective, for one, well, number one perspective on Christmas. Everybody with me? So when we think about Christmas, uh, I'm not saying don't think about the gifts, the trees, uh, all the different things that we think about, singing the songs and all this and and people are, are talking about, uh, well, this is going to be a different Christmas because of COVID-19. And I would agree. You agree? It's going to be different. I'm not saying it's going to be any better. It's going to be, so in other words, we got to watch how many people can gather, what we're going to do, shopping, all this kind of stuff. People change in the sense that uh, all, uh, all kind of people went online rather than go to stores where other people were. So it, it's different in that, in that uh, respect. But it isn't different at all in this respect. Jesus came to die. And so he, and he says, and so his first statement is, he says, but a body you have prepared me. So my point I want to make to you is that religion was never designed to save us. Even God ordained religion. All right, you with me? You, uh, you hear me? Religion. See, when we live in an area that's very religious, and uh, you know, as I, I hear different people talk, people are very religious. Well, they were talking even this morning on the news about changing a little, changing little things, and how are we gonna have church services and all that. And and but again, that has nothing to do with the fact that. Jesus died. He came to die. And so, and, and what the, uh, the songwriter says is, it's amazing. I wonder 
as I walk around, as I wander out under the sky, I wonder how Jesus, our Savior, he did come for to die. Well, most of that is not on people's minds during Christmas. They may look at it on Good Friday and on Easter. You see what I'm saying? But not on Christmas. But in order for Jesus to live a holy and perfect life, he had to have a body. And so a body was specially prepared, a real human body. He's a, and so he, he never ceased to be God, the, the Son, but he had a real human body. And when you read Luke, Matthew, that's what you, you see, that he's a real human being. But when we really think about Christmas, then uh, the thought from the Savior is, I'm coming to be a sacrifice. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. I'm coming to be a sacrifice for sins. Somebody comment. And, and, yes. Yes. Right. Year after year. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. Way in the back. Yeah, uh, correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and it loses its meaning uh, because, uh, and you're, you're absolutely correct. And one, one of the things that happen is, is that we replace what is significant with that which is insignificant. And then we begin to focus on that which is insignificant rather than uh, what is truly uh, significant. So for me, I'm saying... What I want to have is God's perspective. What God, so what do you think? What do you say this is all about? I'm not too, uh, too interested in what somebody else wants, what they, what they say. Well, what does you say? You know, <laughs> uh, a guy was telling me that, uh, you know, uh, well, different people talk about, you know, going to church and different things, and, but yet none of them have any aspect or any thinking whatsoever uh, that Christmas is about. The fact that religion can't save you, us, and that Jesus came, and and the and the, again, he's a real human being in fellowship with the Father. So you can look at it. Second Corinthians, the Bible says this: He became sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus was not a sinner, but but he legally became a sin in our place. He became a uh, he became a sinner in our place. He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So his righteousness is placed to our account. Religion will never do that. So Jesus says in his, in his public ministry, early in his public ministry in the Sermon on the Mount, he says to the scribes and Pharisees, accept your righteousness shall exceed that. He's talking to his disciples and uh, he says, except your righteousness will exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by in no way, no way, no wise will you enter into the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 5, 48, Jesus says, I want you to be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So Hebrews tells us that, that religion will never make us perfect. <laughs> He, he, religion won't make us perfect, and we're called to be perfect. So Jesus had to come. And, uh, and so when he came and lived a holy, perfect life, and uh, then uh, what happens is that his righteousness is placed to our account. Our sins are forgiven. And then by giving us the Holy Spirit, and this is all in this 10th chapter, for by one offering, as Brother Moore says, thank you, brother, one offering, he is perfected forever, those who are sanctified. Now, how many of us are perfect in our living yet? Not yet, but, but we have a perfect standing. And that's called justification. God says, I declare you innocent. I declare you righteous. 
I'm not placing any sin on you. And through, through our whole life, what he does is the process of sanctification. And, and let me go back down, uh, look at this um, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 15 and 16. Hebrews 10, 16. Somebody want to read that for me? Okay, amen. So, justification, God declares us righteous. But what he's doing in sanctification, he says this. Uh, he says, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. What that means is, is what he does is he begins to transform us from the inside out. So we have a perfect standing, and although we're not perfect yet, when we get our glorified body and we're glorified with Jesus, we'll have no sin nature and we'll have a nature that, is, uh, that exists this way with God's uh, laws in our hearts and in our minds. And now, again, we will want to do what God says do and he's going to empower us to do it and we won't have a sin nature to deter us. In, in the wisdom of God, you know, uh, when, um, you know when, when Jesus heals the man that was born blind, you know, that, that great miracle. The man was born blind, John chapter 9. And what they said about him, they said, is, is this the one that was born blind? And then, then some said, well, it looks like him. <laughs> so, you know, they said, well, uh, someone else said something uh, about, uh, about well, we, we, we know he was blind, but now he can see. So we believe he's the one, but he's really not the one. He's not the same. And so when you look at that and you go, so the man was blind and he had never seen anything. But when Jesus heals him, then that man is open, his eyes are open, he can see. So I really like that. He said, well, it's him, but it's really not him, but it is him. And so when you look at our salvation, you know, we can say through Galatians 2.20, we say, look, you know, I used to be this way. But I'm not this way anymore. Not the same. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm perfect. But because God's law is written in my heart and on my mind, I want to do what God says do. And at different times I may fail, but God's got a plan for that failure in time because in eternity we're gonna all, only going to have, uh, like Peter says, uh, we are going to be endowed with a divine nature and you take away the sin nature, we won't sin. So you say, that is Julius, but it's not Julius, <laughs> you know, because the way Julius used to be. And so even if something happens, you know, my sisters and brothers, uh, if, uh, you know, just like say, uh, I used to be the kind of guy, if I got mad enough, you know, I mean, I would, I would hurt somebody. And so, and God, uh, when, when I, if I get mad now, what happens is that the Holy Spirit is beginning to work on me. Now watch yourself. You know, and I'm not fighting with the Holy Spirit. It's like I, I may be tempted, but, to, but then if I mess up, then I'm going, oh, Lord, forgive me. I didn't do that when I was lost. You see what I'm saying? I didn't, and so if I ask anything according to his will, so now I'm a saved person. I'm saying, Father, I blew it. Please forgive me. Fill me with your spirit. Help me not to fall to that again. Now, that's God's, that's God's will. He answers those kind of things. So, on the one hand, as, uh, as Jesus says, I come for, because God's going to give me a body. And in that body, I'm, I'm going to live a holy and righteous life. And I'm going to die and pay the penalty of sins. That's what Christmas is all about. It's what the incarnation. And then he says, I delight to do thy will. <laughs> I delight. I come to do your will. And third, he says, I come to establish a new covenant where my people, your people, Father, are going to want to do what you say. Woo, praise. You're talking about a great gift. <laughs> you know, there are some times uh, uh, to the family of God here, there are some times you know, I, I look back on things and the Holy Spirit just gently bring things to my mind. And I'm saying, man. Yeah, that was kind of, ooh, 
Lord, forgive me. I said, I know you've forgiven me. Uh, and uh, I know you, you, uh, you have forgiven me. But, man, that was a terrible thing to do. And, I, and Father, I, you know, I, I admit, I confess it was sin. So like, like David, when David confessed, he's a man after God's own heart, not because he was perfect, but when, the, when Nathan, when people came to him and showed him stuff, you know, Father, he says, I repent. You are absolutely right, and I'm totally messed up. Totally messed up. Any, any comments? So the, the three statements that he made, go ahead, brother. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir, my brother. Amen. Uh, I, I, I'm with you 100%. Someone said this way, and I learned it said, uh, I hate it when I see my sins being uh, performed by somebody else. You know, it, it, when, it's, when, it, when it's me doing it, uh, well, it wasn't that bad. But when they're doing exactly the same thing I was doing now, how could you do that? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, so, but uh, anyway, so I'm just, I'm looking at Christmas from God's perspective and from his perspective. So regardless of the COVID, regardless of whether I get, whether I get to a store, regardless of different things, the one thing, you know, I said Jesus had in mind when he came into the world was as he talked to his father, he's in relationship with his father. And so I go back to Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 10 and uh, verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings, you. He's talking to his father. He said, Father, you didn't desire and design this as a way for sins to be taken away. And he goes on and he says, uh, since you didn't do, but a body you have, you have uh, prepared for me. And then, uh, one, excuse me, let me read one more verse here. How do these things stick together? Hebrews 10, 20, Hebrews 10, 6, he says, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, he says, but you had no pleasure. But Hebrews 10, 7, then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. So the, father, the son and the father are communing. So, the, so Christmas, Jesus coming into the world in communion with his Father was to live out of his body the Father's will. Comments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. And that's why I'm saying he's 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 perfect man coming to earth. And he because Jesus is gonna be there, he's he's just God. And in his humanity, he lived all the same part of the world here and he was the world. He he came to do this and they were sinners. Yes, sir. Amen, brother. I told I agree. 
you know, and so for me, uh, uh, and you're looking at talking with people, and just myself personally, I love to go back to John chapter 5 and just, and just look at Jesus. And, uh, and he says that uh, in John 5, starting around verse 19, in his relationship, he says, I only do what the Father shows me. He said, but the Father loves me, and he'll show me greater things than these. And I'm going, what a relationship, you know. Uh, I'm only doing what the Father shows me. And you, when you look at that, when we do anything independently of God, that is sin. It's sin because now I'm separating myself from the true and living God and doing something on my own. That's what is called, back in Genesis uh, 3, eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everybody with me? See, because, for instance, God says that it, he says this, uh, and uh, you know, thou shalt not, thou shalt uh, not do this. And then we come along and we say, well, I know what it says, but I think in this case I'm going I'm to I'm do this. So the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a real, it was a real tree, but what it was all about was God made it plain, don't do this, and then I come along and I say, well, I'm going to decide for myself whether I'm going to do this or not. That's the wickedness of sin. And Jesus was saying, I don't do that. I don't act independently. I don't decide on my own what I'm going to do. I'm only doing what my Father shows me. And he loves me, and he's going to show me greater things. Go ahead, Brother Leroy. Yeah, to the Father. <laughs> it's the Father. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, like you said, and like Brother Moore said, it ought to cause me to be, to, especially look at other people, go, you know what, I can't be too hard on him. I was guilty of that same thing. And then on the other hand, I need to be really thanking and praising God for his grace. Man, the grace of God that brought me to this point. You know, wow. Lord, you didn't have to do this. But you, but you, you chose, you, you know, your love and mercy and grace and put it on, on me and put it in my life. Yeah, and so when you look at that, you go, man. You know, uh, like you say, uh, Brother Leroy, it's, as you grow older and you look at some things, it should be all about him. So as uh, a couple of days ago, no, actually, what was it? Uh, what's the day, Tuesday. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, yeah, Friday night, uh, Lindsay calls me, and uh, no, actually, uh, yeah, Friday night, she calls me. She says, Grandpa, you know, I was coming down to see you, but uh, she said, but Mom tested positive for COVID. And uh, I said, well, okay. Uh, she said, I haven't seen her because, you know, I'm, I'm in a different house now, and she, Lindsay got her own house. She said, so I haven't seen her for a week. And I said, well... Uh, we'll probably just play it safe, and uh, so no need of you to come down. And uh, in the meantime, uh, I called uh, uh, my daughter, and she said, well, Dad, she said, I don't have any symptoms. I'm asymptomatic. She said, I, I, and so she said, uh, she talked, I talked to her Friday, Saturday, Sunday. She said, I don't feel nothing, Dad. She said, if, <laughs> if anything happened, you ain't got to call me. I'll let you know. <laughs> and, and, and just, just and, and, you know, so you begin to think about relationships. And so I haven't called her since Sunday because she said, Dad, if any, anything show up, I'm going to call you first. I actually talked to Jeff, her husband. You know, I'm, I'm calling you. Okay. So anyway, and, and I'm going, I ain't worried about it because she hasn't called. And I said, what, a, what, a, what an understanding of our relationship with Jesus. Every time I need to know something, he lets me know. And there are times he hasn't said anything. I said, well, it's like my daughter. If there was something for me to know, he would tell me. But he ain't, he ain't told me, so I ain't... Because I used to sometimes, I, I, I get so, I, said, well, look, I must be doing something wrong. Let me repent. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And so, 
And God says, hey, wait a minute. I, uh, when I want you to repent, I'll let you know. In the meantime, enjoy this relationship. Man. And you, and you figure and you find how much God loves us. So, when I, uh, so this closing prayer meeting, uh, well, you know, be, before Christmas, I just wanted to spend a little time looking at, man, from, from God's perspective. Jesus said, I'm coming into the world. Uh, I mean, you know, and so what do you come in the world for? You come in the world and everybody's going to exalt you and magnify. No, I'm coming in the world and I got a body. What you going to do with the body? I'm going to live a holy, perfect, precious life before my father. Then what you going to do? Then I'm going to die. Pay the penalty of sins. Because I got my father, uh, father in mind first. And after that, I got the people for whom I'm dying. And I'm dying for the whole world. Okay? Uh, you know, th uh, there's a song that, um, uh, that's saying, we're going to stop here in just a minute. But you used to sing this song, Brother Clyde. It was uh, Above All. And, 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 and um, part of that song goes what? Uh, is it? And like a rose trampled on the ground. Is that right? He took the, took the fall and thought of me. <laughs> I see him talking to his father. And because of the relationship with, with the father, he took the fall and thought of me. And you. That's Christmas. Like a rose trampled on the ground. <laughs> so those are the three things I just, uh, just wanted to share with you that this last uh, this uh, two days before Christmas. God's perspective. Father and Son, and and then and you also. Uh, I really I, I love and admire the, the Holy Spirit. He only shows up every now and then, <laughs> and he's God. He, he's just as much God as Father and Son. So Hebrews 10, uh, uh, 14 says this. Hebrews 10, 14 and 15. Hebrews 10, 14 says, For by one offering he has perfected mm, 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 forever those who it doesn't say who are sanctified. It says those who are being. God, not through with us yet. We are being sanctified. Verse 15. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. <laughs> There's the Holy Spirit. When Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit in John 16, Jesus says the Holy Spirit is not going to talk about himself. He's going, to, he's going to talk about me. And when you look, you said, man, as you're saying, Brother Leroy, Jesus on the earth always gave the Father the glory. The Holy Spirit indwelling us and Jesus at the right hand, he always gives the Son the glory. And, and then, you, you know, uh, John chapter 12, Jesus, uh, there's a voice coming from heaven and it sound like it thunders. And Jesus said, this voice didn't come to me, come for my sake, it came from yours. And Jesus said, Father, glorify your name. And the Father says, I've already done that, and I will do it. So when you, I'm looking at God the Son, God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, not concerned about self first, but willing to do what needs to be done for, again, his glory, for our blessed benefit. So, that's, to me, that's the Savior's perspective. And so, regardless of the COVID, I don't know who I may get to see or who I may not get to see. But the thing is, Christmas was about Jesus coming to save me. And, and so, nothing that's going on in the world is going to diminish that. Go ahead, Brother Leroy. Amen. 
Amen. Any other, any other comments or questions? All right, so let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together today. As we read in Hebrews chapter 10, thank you, Lord. We realize it was not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away our sins. Our Lord Jesus, knowing that when he came into the world, talking to his Father, says, The body you have prepared for me. He goes on to say that he has come to do the will of his Father. And then thirdly, he says that he's going to put God's laws into our hearts and in our minds. And as a result, we are going to be perfected forever. Heavenly Father, thank you for your plan, your purpose. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for your will. We honor you and, and we, we bless your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.